Hi, I'm Nate Ball. Today I want to welcome you here into my shop where we can build one of my favorite projects ever together, the Stomp Rocket. What we're trying to do is connect a bottle to some kind of tube with some kind of hose to launch a rocket like this. <laughs> the great thing about this project is that like most projects, there's no exact one right way to do it. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna give you options for the bottle, the hose, and the launch tube. And I'm gonna build it three different ways, which should really just be some basic starting places for you to build your own amazing, fabulous, hopefully very successful stomp rocket launch system. Pause. Remember to use the pause button whenever you need to so you can follow along at your own pace. Let's do it. For the bottle, the two liter bottle is really ideal. It has the best mix of properties I've found so far, which include easy to squish and flatten, big volume coming down to a small neck that's easy to attach to hoses, and once you crush it, there's not much structure in the body, so it's easy to reinflate. The next key part is attaching the air volume from the bottle to the launch tube. And we do that with some kind of a hose or a pipe. There's a lot of great options for this. Here's an old dishwasher hose. This is some foam pipe insulation. My favorite is the old bicycle inner tube. Great to repurpose these. And you can also build a rigid structure out of PVC pipe. If you're totally in a pinch and you have no pipe or hose available, you can even improvise a functional one out of cardboard with a little duct tape on there. Then of course, there's the all important launch tube. You're looking for something pretty stiff, smooth on the outside, and round with as regular a shape as possible. Other handy materials to have on hand include scissors strong enough to cut cardboard, duct tape as always, hot glue, a little extra cardboard for rocket fins, and then for the rocket, some sheets of paper. It's nice and lightweight and has enough structure to fly straight. And of course, last but not least, make sure to have a grown up around just in case you need a hand with some of the trickier parts like cutting cardboard or getting that duct tape ripped. But make sure you don't let the grown up do the project for you. This is your project. To start off, we're gonna do the most accessible, low tech version of this build available, which is a two liter bottle, cardboard, and duct tape. When you're making a tube out of cardboard, you wanna make sure you're not trying to roll it against the grain, it's super stiff that way. Instead, roll it with the grain. <laughs> ah. If you're patient and you work it back and forth enough times, you can get it pretty round. Definitely take advantage of some additional structure like the edge of a table. That's starting to look a little better. Mm -hmm. It ain't pretty, but hopefully it works. Perfect. Okay, voila. One lovely cardboard tube. And this is gonna be our hose going from the bottle to the launch tube. I'm gonna add some more pieces on so that we don't have any air leaking out the sides. And now, you can fit that edge over your two liter bottle and tape it on. Now onto the launch tube. Our primary method of building those rockets is to use a sheet of paper. And the sheet of paper is of course 11 inches long just long enough for that smaller size rocket. If yours is a little bit squished and not cylindrical, you can just keep working the cardboard into a smoother shape, even after it's all taped together. Now I've got the launch tube ready, and all that's left is to join the launch tube to the hose and add some stabilization to it. By cutting my cardboard at a 45 degree angle. Kids, if you're less experienced in cutting cardboard with scissors, definitely grab somebody a little older for this part. So you can see how I've cut this off roughly a 45 degree angle, and I will do the same with my hose portion. Oof, I'm cutting through a lot of layers of cardboard there. Okay, look at that. That's great. Almost no restriction of the airflow going through there. Now let's just Add some more tape. I've got a pretty good joint between my hose portion and the launch tube. This thing is tipping 
over. So what do you do? Well, my favorite way to increase the stability of anything is to add a triangle. This next version is definitely the simplest. We've got a two liter bottle, an old bike inner tube, and a piece of PVC pipe. Depending on the diameter of your bike inner tube, you may have to stretch it over the mouth of the bottle, which is kind of a good thing. Because that'll help make a good seal. Next, of course, add some tape. And then, do the same thing on the other side. So this is actually a fully functional stump rocket launcher all by itself, but we should definitely add a little bit of stability so this thing isn't just aiming all over the place or laying flat on the ground to launch a rocket. That's not gonna work. So we can do a couple of different methods of stabilizing this thing. If you're gonna launch outside, you can grab a barbecue skewer, duct tape it on here, and just stick it right into the ground to get your launch tube set up. That works awesome. Now, if you're launching on hard ground, you gotta build or clamp it to some kind of support. You can zip tie this to a chair. You can clamp it to a block of wood. No matter how you attach this thing upright, you do wanna make sure that the hose isn't gonna be constricting the airflow because it's pinched or kinked at a really tight angle. You know, this was just so simple and fast. Let's just go with this. Now, the rocket. Get some tape ready. Wrap it around. You can snug it down initially by kind of working it together this way. Always looking for that inner corner. Really loving how there's some structure underneath this for me to push against when I'm tightening my tape down. Oh, and for the fit check, that is beautiful. Of course, the PVC pipe is super smooth, but I've got a, just the perfect size of air gap in between there. It's a snug fit. It's not gonna let extra air out, but it slides beautifully. Now on this rocket too, I'm gonna put some extra tape down at the bottom, and that's gonna do something important for me. After a number of launches, these will often get hard to put back on the tube because the paper begins to crinkle down the base of the rocket. So without taking up that precious air gap too much, I'm gonna to throw some extra tape in here and flatten it down as tight as I can with my thumb, folding it over the edge. This way, my paper won't crinkle as much at the base of the rocket and I'll have an easier time putting it on there for subsequent launches. Okay, that's good. Now, I was going. I'm gonna go for the ping pong ball on this one. Not a huge amount of precision to this part, just add tape until it stays. I think I'm gonna go rectangle fins on this one just for fun. Hot glue works great with cardboard, but it can take a little bit of patience to let it dry. However, its ability to reinforce rocket fins is fantastic. You carefully run an extra bead of hot glue down the seams. Okay, and our indoor test launch in three, two, one. Whoa. Okay, that was super interesting. Did you see how the rocket didn't even hit the ceiling even though I was pounding on it with both fists? This bike inner tube is kind of squishy. Every time it goes around a little corner, it flattens the hose so it can make the bend. And can any air get through that? No, almost none. So a bunch of the energy I just spent double fist slamming on that two liter bottle was spent not launching the rocket, but just trying to open that poor launch hose back up. Next time, when we take this outside, I'm definitely gonna be careful to lay this out flat to eliminate all the bends possible. Now we're gonna do a third version of the build. And we're going to combine the strength and rigidity of the cardboard hose with the smoothness of the PVC launch tube. And to do that, we're gonna build the whole launch system out of PVC pipe and fittings from the hardware store. This method is super simple. We're gonna cut a piece, maybe about a foot long for the launch hose, another foot or so for the launch tube. We're gonna grab some fittings to attach them. So this all by itself would be easy enough to just tape the bottle onto, but it's gonna tip over. <laughs> so let's add some stability by putting another angle in the system. 
Now, the weight of the bottle, along with this little arm, puts a stabilizing torque on the whole device such that it'll stay up all by itself. All we've got to do now is tape this thing on. This is not a perfect fit, but that's okay. The duct tape will take up any of the non-fitting and keep a pretty good seal. <laughs> Look at that. Another benefit of using PVC pipe is that the fittings let you adjust the angles after it's all together. So even though we've got a bit of an angle coming down from our bottle, the launch tube can still stick straight up. All right, let's make the rocket and try this thing out. Three, two, one. That was a great launch, even just inside the garage here. And look at this. It actually launched into the ceiling so hard, it dented the paper from the impact against the ceiling. Now, of course, to reinflate it, all you've got to do is blow back in the opposite direction. And it's ready for another launch. Now, another thing I love about this design is this one is modular, meaning we can take different modules off of it and swap in new ones to see what the differences are, like this. With the right adapters, you can take out the launch tube, this one is one inch in diameter, and put in a half inch diameter launch tube. Look at that. Now we can put on the rocket that we made for the half inch diameter tube and see how that goes. Three, two, one. That seemed like it launched even harder. I think it's time to take these outside and try them out. Okay, we're out here at the test site and the more consistent I can make the stomp going into the bottle each time, the more we can trust the data about how high the rocket goes. All right, a 50 pound weight dropped from my belly button. Three, two, one. Whew. That was super high. Here's the second version we made. This one with a bike inner tube as the hose. Three, two, one. Pretty good. Let's try the PVC version. Three, two, one. Whew. That was pretty high. Not bad for just some air pressure from a couple of bottles, some PVC pipe, and a good stump. But wait, what about the data? How high did these things actually go? Well, I messed up a little bit. I was planning to use a five foot height measurement and stack it up in my video frame to estimate the height of each rocket. But every single rocket went way higher than I expected. They all went out of frame, so I had no good way to measure. There's some great simple ways to measure the height of a rocket flight using trigonometry, but that's a topic for a separate video. For now, enjoy building and launching awesome rockets. And for more fun content like this, you can find more of me at nateball.net and I will see you in the next video and hopefully out at the launch site. Thanks for watching.